Hello. Today I'd like to talk about what I call ancient astronomy. Um, what it really is is a system of looking at the world and understanding our universe that's drawn from the beginning uh, of human experiences, uh, both experience of what we see up in the sky and what we see around us in, in nature, if you're going to call it that. Um, but uh, a model that held for literally thousands of years um, and its form that uh, we see it today, a kind of modern scientific form, uh, for nearly 1,500 years. And so it had an enormous impact on uh, the way people thought about the world, especially uh, people that were familiar with this model. But also, even though it was almost completely wrong in almost every little bit of it, um, the, the bits of it which were accurate and the, the habits of mind it trained in the people that really studied it led to uh, a much deeper understanding of the world. And that's a, a long, complicated story, but uh, uh, I'm going to try to give you a little piece of the beginning of it uh, today. All right. Um, to set it again, um, you know, ancient astronomy uh, is uh, just uh, the kind of questions you ask about what you see and why you see the things you see in the sky, especially at night, but also the sun. Um, the way the stars move, uh, the way the planets move, the way the sun and moon uh, change over, uh, over the course of uh, days, weeks, months, and uh, uh, even a year. Um, and uh, very tied in with this is the observation that uh, the things we see in the sky affect the things we see on Earth, um, in particular, uh, the sun. Um, if it hasn't occurred to you, uh, the sun really does seem to control our weather. And so in that sense, uh, the idea behind astrology, which is that... Uh, the, uh, the motion of, the, of the, 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 an appearance of the moon and the planets and things like that uh, affect our lives on Earth or determine something about our lives on Earth um, is not, uh, I hate to say this, but completely stupid. Um, it really is true with respect to the sun. Um, it's, of course, total bunk with respect to everything else. And uh, um, drawing humans away from that idea uh, was an important uh, philosophical and, and uh, uh, scientific enterprise that continues today. Uh, unfortunately. Um, so the most obvious thing is that the sun controls our weather. Um, but uh, And this is really true. Uh, when the sun is high in the sky, it's warmer and sunnier. When it's low in the sky, uh, we have winter here in our northern climates. Um, but even in uh, uh, more, uh, you might call temperate latitudes, uh, for example, in, uh, in uh, Egypt, uh, the inundation of the Nile, this is this important thing if you live in Egypt, uh, where the Nile floods, uh, the waters rise, and then recede, and what's left behind is silt that uh, makes the Nile River Valley extremely fertile and able to support a large population. Uh, this inundation of the Nile uh, was caused by the melting of snows in Ethiopia, uh, in Central Africa. Um, and uh, it could be predicted not by the motion of the sun, but actually by the rising and setting of certain stars at certain times of the year. Um, and so the uh, the problem, uh, or, the, or the thing that was observed, is that... Uh, we, if you were an Egyptian scholar from 3,000 years ago, uh, would know that uh, the, the time of the flooding of the Nile is going to happen in a few weeks or a few days uh, by observing the heavens at night. Uh, then you could know to move the people out of the flood region, uh, wait for a while, and prepare for the, uh, the, uh, the, the planting of the crops, uh, the barley and whatever it is they ate uh, back in those days. Uh, in the uh, the coming days. So um, understanding the weather, so weather prediction uh, can be made by looking at the heavens. Um, if you read Hesiod, uh, um, Hesiod, uh, who wrote a, a sort of manual of agriculture for ancient Greeks around the time of Homer, um, you know, talks about the rising and setting of certain constellations as the time to, uh, to plant and harvest certain crops. Um, if you read the Bible, you'll see things like that uh, as well. Connections between uh, the things we see in the heavens, and uh, the idea of a, of a calendar, of a way to predict the, uh, the cycles of the year. Um, so uh, so the, the flaw that happens, and this is sort of the punchline of the whole thing, is that the correlation between these rising and setting of stars um, and the causative effect, you know, really from the sun, are easy to mix up and easy to uh, uh, confuse with each other. And of course, it happens uh, to us today. Uh, we see two things that happen at the same time, or one before the other, and we assume our brains get the impression uh, that the one thing caused the other, even though there's no real connection between these two uh, these two events. Um, so I'm not get ahead of myself too much. Um, I'm going to step back and, and just imagine living in a world where your life, literally your life, depends on um, knowing when to plant your crops, knowing when to uh, hunt down the tasty animals, uh, knowing when to rest from the kind of labor that uh, is involved in in uh, in, in intensive farming. Or even if you live in some more uh, uh, 
nomadic lifestyle. Uh, you need to know things about the season of the year uh, to know where to move your herds to eat the food that's going to be tasty for them, uh, when their cycles of uh, uh, mating and birth are going to happen, and, uh, and so on. Stuff that's far removed from our daily experience, uh, but not far removed from the experience of nature and the observations of uh, a world without technology as we, uh, as we might know it. If you live in that kind of world, um, and even the world we live in, because we're still humans, the same kind of humans uh, that lived uh, thousands of years ago, um, what brings you comfort are certain cycles. Uh, the patterns of the moon as it uh, waxes and wanes, as it gets bigger and smaller. Uh, the sun as it uh, uh, rises and sets every day, for that matter, um, as it, uh, its elevation of the sky raises and lowers and the seasons change. Uh, even the, uh, the, the growth of, uh, children of little animals into adults and, uh, and, and their, their eventual passing, these kind of cycles bring us uh, a kind of comfort. Um, and if you watch the Lion King movie, you know, the circle of life song, uh, they, uh, they give sense to the world. Okay. What's scary and dangerous is when things break those cycles, when, uh, uh, something dies too soon, uh, when a natural disaster happens, when a war breaks out and, uh, famine strikes the land or so things like that, or when a pandemic uh, arrives and disrupts uh, the cycles and patterns that we're so used to. Um, this is bad for humans. Uh, it's confusing. And we look for some kind of correlative effect. We wonder why these things happen. And so we look to the, the place that seems to control these things uh, up in the sky. This is a normal, not healthy, but a normal thing to do. Uh, we should know better now, but we still search for these causes. And, and uh, in some cases, those Causes are not uh, the right causes, um, you know, and, and, and you can look around and see these things happening uh, all over. It's hard to know what the right causes are. Anyway, um, our human minds are very good at detecting these patterns or these correlations uh, and uh, predicting rightly or wrongly, uh, it's something we naturally do, uh, what will happen if uh, we see one thing that we saw before uh, lead to another thing that we think is a, is a cause. So the traditional example is... Uh, uh, you know, if we see something that looks like a tiger in the jungle, we run away from the tiger and don't get eaten. And the people that don't know how to do that get eaten. Um, and so it's for our benefit to overpredict uh, some of these patterns, to uh, be too good at recognizing some of these correlations. Um, and so the, the, the problems that uh, astrology arise from, I think, are very understandable. Um, it's uh, actually part of the human condition to, uh, it seems at least, uh, to relate the things we see in the sky, especially at night, with uh, the things we see in our daily lives and, and, uh, uh, and uh, so on. And this uh, transcends not just any particular culture, but uh, we know uh, that uh, whatever down here is India, China, Egypt, Babylon, especially the Mayans who are totally unrelated, um, all had uh, different ways of interpreting the things they see in the, uh, in the heavens uh, and related that to uh, a causative effect of the things on Earth. In other words, uh, the kind of person you would be might be determined. You could imagine could be determined uh, by the positions of the constellations in the uh, uh, in the heavens, uh, where the sun is uh, in the in the sky. And hopefully that sounds stupid and crazy, um, but it's not if you imagine uh, the importance of uh, say neonatal care um, of the diet of a woman who is with child uh, of uh, what happens to uh, a very young infant uh, in a world where disease and Food scarcity uh, lead to high rates of infant mortality. It's probably true that uh, uh, an infant that grows up in a different time of the year uh, might have different health outcomes uh, in the long run, you know, simply because of the kind of food and diet that are available uh, throughout its uh, gestational and early life uh, period. Right. So these are things that, uh, uh, you know, we're not going to, you know, we don't need to talk about the physics class, but we can imagine um, that. Uh, you know, people observe these things over long periods of time, decades, you know, hundreds of years uh, as it, wisdom is accumulated, uh, would once again associate uh, the correlation of where the sun is with the causation of what happens to uh, to uh, young children as they, as they grow up. So the idea isn't stupid, it's just wrong. Um, and now we know it's stupid because it's wrong. Okay, and so that's where we've moved in the last, uh, really just the last few hundred years. As late as uh, the 1600s and even beyond that, um, the, the difference between astrology and astronomy is hard to, uh, to make. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, you know, probably some of the most famous astronomers, uh, Johannes Kepler, for example, Tycho Brahe, made their living really as uh, astrologers, you know, predictors of what the, uh, uh, what the future would be like for a, a child born under certain, uh, certain stellar conditions, if you don't think of it that way. Um, 
so that's a that's a, a thing that's a, a complicated story uh, that I'll touch on later, um, and and why it's important I'll get to in uh, just a minute. Um, on the other hand, uh, there's a uh, a notion that still seems prevalent that uh, uh, people in the ancient world or people even in the medieval European world thought the earth was flat. And uh, that is just not true. Um, it's There's simply uh, no, uh, even I think minimally educated person who thought the earth was flat, except in a sense of it looks kind of flat, you know, where you are, if you live in a, a plane like that. Um, I think what happens is that uh, uh, people who, want to pretend that people before us were stupid, uh, look at things like a, a, a map of the world, you know, that was created, and then assume that because the map is flat, uh, the people that made the map thought the earth is flat. That's just the kind of stupid thing you might think if you don't understand what you're looking at and don't think about the world the way people thought about the world uh, at the time they made that map. All right, so how do we know the earth is round without uh, uh, going to space? I don't know. Um, lots of ways. Okay. Uh, one obvious one, uh, if you go even uh, look out over Lake Michigan, is that uh, a ship that's very tall disappears over the horizon. We see the top of the ship uh, if it's coming to us before we see the bottom of the ship and, and vice versa as it as it sails away. Um, but more obvious things, more important things are that if you go to different latitudes, if you go north or south, the stars appear uh, at different heights above the horizon, particularly the, uh, the pole star. Um, I remember this myself uh, once uh, going down to New Mexico and looking up and seeing Orion way higher in the sky than I'd ever seen him before, ever noticed him before. Uh, it was a, a real shock. So as you, especially as you imagine migrating further south or further north or sailing across the Mediterranean uh, from north to south, uh, or the Nile River for that matter, you'll uh, you'll know, it'll be very obvious that uh, the stars you see are different ones depending on your latitude, but not how far east or west you go. Um, if you go east or west, um, the ancient world, and by ancient world now, I mean uh, uh, the world of uh, uh, the Roman Empire, early Roman Empire, uh, and the uh, uh, the biblical times that uh, that uh, we're familiar with. Um, uh, we know about time zones. Um, we know that uh, uh, if uh, an, a lunar eclipse happens, uh, it'll be observed in Babylon at uh, one time, and uh, maybe at uh, uh, midnight and at dusk in uh, Alexandria in Egypt, uh, some hundreds and thousands of miles east or west of each other. Um, so, of course, if you, uh, uh, right now, it's, uh, well, whatever time it is in uh, Kenosha, it's an hour later in Detroit or Philadelphia or Washington, D.C. Um, so uh, this only makes sense if uh, the Earth has some kind of roundness, that the sun is at different uh, above the Earth and either moving around the Earth or the Earth is moving around under the sun um, and is round. Uh, there's no way to get time zones if you have a flat Earth or some other kind of shape of Earth. Um, if you look at a lunar eclipse and see the shadow of the Earth on the moon, which everybody knows is what it is, um, including ancient, I'm sorry, including native peoples in Jamaica who welcomed Christopher Columbus and his crew, um, you know that the shadow of the Earth uh, is a circle, um, and so the Earth must be a sphere, uh, and that's cast on the uh, on the moon. And uh, from the size of that shadow and the uh, 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 knowledge of geometry, we can actually almost calculate how far it is from the Earth. At least this is something that the uh, ancient, uh, not ancient, ancient Greeks, but the Greeks of this period were able to uh, to calculate. Um, and finally, it's also known that uh, the, uh, the seasons of the year, uh, the intensity of those seasons depends on the latitude. And so how high or low the sun is on the horizon, particularly at the uh, solstices of uh, deepest winter and hottest summer, uh, these are correlated with your, your latitude. And once again, this only makes sense if uh, the Earth is a sphere. Um, so the knowledge like this, uh, good knowledge of even the size of the Earth by measuring um, how much the height of the sun changes at the height of summer as you go north or south, uh, gave us a good understanding of uh, at least part of the world's terrestrial geography. Um, uh, everyone has agreement that the Earth is a, is a sphere. Um, and even alternate hypotheses, uh, and this is a, there's a section on Aristotle where he talks about other ideas, um, you can prove they're stupid, they're wrong, uh, because they don't fit the data, they don't fit our observe, observational experience. Just as humans, without technology, without uh, much knowledge of uh, the world beyond what we can see uh, or travel to, not to, without, with little difficulty, uh, from, uh, um, you know, without cars and planes and automobiles and satellites. Um, so to see this revived as a, as a thing, as a question of science is, uh, to me, especially offensive. Um, and, uh, um, it's offensive not because, not just because it's contradicts science. It, it offends me because 
Um, it's a revival idea that never was held seriously by anybody. Um, and uh, the fact that people can't explain how we know the Earth is round except by talking about NASA uh, is a failure of, I think, the education uh, of people in a scientific way of thinking. Um, enough of that. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, so uh, this model universe I mentioned earlier uh, was uh, really put together by a guy named Ptolemy. Uh, he was a, a, a person of a probably Greek or Egyptian descent. He lived in Alexandria in Egypt um, about uh, around the time of Jesus, a little bit afterwards. And uh, What he did is uh, create a model, a very complicated model, uh, of the universe with Earth at the center, um, about the right size. And the moon and the planets and the sun all orbiting around uh, around Earth in very complicated formations, uh, circles with little circles on the circles. And uh, the Earth wasn't actually at the center of, this, of these circles, but actually moved by a little bit. Uh, it was a very complicated uh, model. It took uh, a lot of learning just to begin to understand, uh, especially about mathematics. What this meant is, is that to study astronomy, one needed to learn spherical trigonometry. One needed to train one's mind in a very mathematical way, a very abstract way of thinking, a way of thinking that's very difficult even for uh, people today to imagine uh, what um, thing moving in a what a thing moving in a circle is doing, uh, depending on where you are on the uh, on the Earth. It's a very very neat uh, process, and without calculators. And so, uh, if you read this book for some reason, you'll find tables of sines, tables of uh, cosines, things like that, which are calculated by hand without Arabic numbers. And so it's all letters, little Greek letters. It's really kind of, well, it's fun for me, but not for other people. All right. So the uh, uh, this model, though, uh, studying this model and uh, comparing the observations we see in the sky, this is uh, throughout the uh, Middle Ages, the Renaissance, uh, when Ptolemy was uh, revived in the West. And also it had always never been lost in the, uh, uh, in the Islamic world. Uh, but by comparing the model with the data, it becomes increasingly clear that the model and the data aren't fitting each other very well. And so that, uh, that failure of the model uh, led to new thinking about how the world might be really constructed, how the universe might really be constructed. And that's a story uh, for another, another video. All right. Well, thanks.